Hello, my name is Tara Thomas, and I'm coming to you today from the meeting pool. Thank you so much for joining me for this session on boosting your workflow and productivity. If you would like to see some of the information that I'm talking about later, you can go to meetingpool.net slash cool apps, meetingpool.net slash cool apps, and we have a lot of those listed here. I also would like to thank all of you for joining me, and I'd like to thank the Planet IMAX team for including the meeting pool in this virtual event. So let's go ahead and dive in. What do we mean when we say workflow? Well, workflow is a way of looking at all of your resources, your communication, your technology, your teams, the way you do things in terms of process, and really streamlining the way all of these components of what you do and how you do it work together. So we're going to talk through not only some workflow methodologies, but some technology tools that should be really great to help you with your workflow on productivity. So let's get started in examining how productive you are. One of the best apps to figure out how productive you are is called Rescue Time. Rescue Time really helps you track how you spend your digital day. You load it on your devices and it tells you what apps you're in. It tracks your distraction and really helps you get focused in terms of the way you're spending your time. So no more getting to 4.30 in the afternoon wondering where the day went and where that report, why that report isn't done. Uh, if you can see in Rescue Time that you spent 44% of your day in Facebook. Next sweet process is a way for you to systematize Let's put a system in for all of those repetitive tasks that you do over and over and over again, and that you have to share in terms of direction with your colleagues or family or friends. Now, systematization means that you're able to document, archive, and share a specific process, almost like a process manual, and use sweet process as a method of really sharing and circulating those ways of doing things. So no more wondering when a colleague is not available because maybe they're on the Zoom call all day, uh, how you do something. You can actually use Sweet Process to help your teams stay on target and do things with the same method. Speaking of methodology, let's talk about a methodology that takes nothing more advanced than a good old fashioned piece of paper and pen or pencil. I'm talking about the Eisenhower method as a way of getting productive and organizing yourself. The Eisenhower method directs you to split your paper into four squares. The first top left square is what you need to do immediately. It's those tasks that are critical. To the right of that, you can put what you need to schedule. And that means things you can plan to do later or at the appropriate time for that task. Then what you can delegate. Part of being a productive person is understanding when to get your team members or family members to do things with and for you. And then lastly, what you won't do, meaning what doesn't need to really be done that you may have been doing or what you wanna stop yourself from doing ever. So the Eisenhower method is good for anyone, even if you feel you're not that tech savvy. Next is Microsoft To Do. And you might say, why Microsoft To Do? Well, Microsoft To Do used to be Wonderlist. So if you were a fan of Wonderlist and its ease of use, its breezy simplicity in the way it helps you get organized, you can try Microsoft To Do. This is really an app made for people who want to make a list and tick things complete. Pick Anna up from piano practice, done. You can also organize your lists by name or for different purposes, home, family, groceries, etc., and then use these lists across apps and share them with participants you need to help you get things done. Trello is a project management tool that has so many uses. One of the first things to know about Trello is that they have hundreds of integrations. Hundreds of other apps work with Trello, which makes it great if you're building a productivity stack of apps that you're using together to make your workflow and productivity better. You can see Trello is very flexible. This is what a gal online calls a mega Trello board. Look at all these components of her projects that she's managing from resources to what they're doing this month to what's done or on pause even. So Trello is so flexible and so useful, not only on its own, but with so many other applications that I'm sure you'll find a way for your team to leverage it. Now we all know people, if you've seen me at IMAX Live or on any other speaking opportunity I've done, I usually talk about those people with addictions. The addiction is not drugs or alcohol. The addiction, addiction is Excel. And for folks who love Excel, and try to wrangle it into all different types of tools when it's really a financial tool, might like Smartsheet. 
Smart Sheet gives you that warm, snugly, comfy feel of a spreadsheet, but actually allows you to get the powerhouse features of a mainstream project management tool. Now, those features include things like notifications, um, Gantt charting, file management, drawing and annotation tools, all sorts of useful elements in managing a project. If we're talking project management, I have to say the one I've used for over a decade that I find really a can't fail solution for almost any type of project management situation is Basecamp. Why do I love Basecamp? No one has ever asked me how to use Basecamp. It's very easy to use, manage, and collaborate with. One of the other nice features of Basecamp is that you can actually tell Basecamp who's in your internal team, who's in your external team, and control what each of those sides of the coin see in terms of that project. That becomes very useful when you work with a lot of outside suppliers or vendors whom you don't want to see all of your internal communication and collaboration. Rika is really wonderful if you're looking for an alternative to something like Microsoft Project. Microsoft Project is a very strong and useful tool, but there are lots of people who really aren't enamored of it. Rika is a good alternative because it can manage even the largest projects very, very deftly and has a lot of powerhouse features for teams with subteams and those tasks associated with all of those subteams. Now we're going to talk about a couple of tools that actually help you make your applications work together better. Um, many of you may have heard of If This Then That. This is in the top right here, IFTTT. If This Then That lets you utilize what are called recipes to make applications, functionality, and process work together for you. So if you'd like images that come in from your sister via email to be automatically uploaded to your Instagram feed, you can have a recipe in If This Then That that will help you do that. If you would like to silence your phone, after every calendared meeting begins, if this then that can help you put that process automatically into play. Zapier is very similar to if this then that because it also is very, very well known for helping applications work together. It has a lot of business applications already built into the Zapier system that you can connect using pre-made zaps. And those zaps can help you connect things you probably never knew you could automate. So I really encourage you to look at both of these solutions if you're looking for better ways to make your, again, productivity stack or series of applications and processes work better together. Zoho Social is a great way to manage your social media processes. Why Zoho? There are lots of social media tools on the market, but Zoho Social is affordable, easy, and manageable. You can manage multiple brands, meaning different divisions of one company or different clients, etc. very, very economically. It's easy to post and it's easy to see what's been posted and conduct interactive or engaging conversations from your social channels. XAI is a way to use AI or artificial intelligence to schedule your meetings. You get an assistant, typically named Amy, and you tell Amy who you need to meet with and when you need to meet with them. And Amy will actually go out and ping or query those other meeting participants and find out the best time that works for everyone. So it makes it easy for you to actually schedule lots of different meetings with lots of different people or audiences without having to spend a lot of time manual, manually answering emails and initiating questions about when people are available. Fuse is a collaboration tool that has a lot of great features. Now it has chat features. It has some features for meeting sharing. You can take notes, collaborate on documents, and do lots of other things that you would do in an online meeting, including via video. But one thing that's really lovely about Fuse is you can actually use it as a soft phone, meaning an online phone. You can dial out to people. You can call them and say, let's video conference. You can use it if, like a lot of people who are home, you need an office phone in your home and you'd like to use your laptop or desktop computer. And really wonderful thing about Fuse is you can use it for a call center. You can share calls with your team and do all of the sort of things you would do in a PBX system. So it's nice if calling and calling out is something that you need to do along with your communication and collaboration platform. Next we have what is probably the application I use more than anything every single day of the year, and that is Slack. 
Slack is what I call a core application for me, for my team, for my clients, and for the way I communicate with most people that I work with regularly. Slack allows you to have Slack channels and chat with people real time in those Slack channels, but you can also share files. You can separate your channels by interest, or by tasks, or by topic. So if you have a channel for venues, a channel for virtual, a channel for food and beverage, a channel for vendor partners, you can share all of that communication in Slack. You can also initiate Slack calls, which can be audio or have a video component, as well as sharing your screen. And like Trello, Slack works with hundreds of other applications. So if, for instance, every time someone registers for your internal meeting, you would like to push that registration into Slack so that you get a Slack notification. You can create a Zapier application connection to Slack from your registration tool or your video conferencing tool, and that registration notification can be pushed into Slack. So it's a really convenient way to sort of centralize your core communication with your team or people you communicate with regularly. Huddle is a wonderful application if you have a lot of approvals uh, for documents that you're working on. Huddle does an automated approval queue that allows you to put in a series of people, upload documents, and ask for review and annotation from all of those participants. It will automatically handle all of the in-between, meaning the downloading of the document for people who need to review it, and then the uploading to handle their reviews so that the next person can see what's been done. So if you spend a lot of manual time and emails actually managing approvals of different types of documents, you might want to look at Huddle. HelloSign competes with DocuSign and doesn't just help you get documents that you'd like to get signed, signed electronically. It also has a really great module that lets you get forms completed electronically, easily, and in a mobile format. So if you use a lot of contractors or you have people that you need to collect W9 information from, things like this, HelloSign is excellent at doing that. You can actually send a link directly from HelloSign to a recipient and they'll be able to complete that W9 for you on their phone and send it back via the Hello Sign system. You can also do all of the traditional digital signing that you can do with other signing products as well. But they really have extended so there's a great workflow set of thinking for the way Hello Sign works for you. Now back to our friends with the addiction. That's right, the Excel Addicted. Another application that those folks who love Excel really start to like is Airtable. Airtable is so flexible. Not only does it have the feel of a spreadsheet, so you have all of those rows and cells, but Airtable is so much more. You can use it as a database where you're holding data. You can actually add attachments in a row in cells. You can tag data easily so it's searchable. But one of the best things about Airtable is all of the templates that it contains. All of those templates include things like registration templates. So you're collecting registration, having a nice formal page that Airtable does for you, but having all that data in an Airtable table. So there are lots of ways to use this and lots of alternatives with it that are much better than trying to wrangle Excel into something that it's just not. So Newton is a way to consolidate your emails. If you have multiple email clients, you have a Gmail, you have an Outlook, you have an Outlook 365, and you want to have one email client where you can look at all of your email comprehensively, you can use Newton. Newton has really about 40 or 50,000 subscribers and almost went out of business last month but was saved because so many people love the Newton experience as a way to get really efficient in managing the workflow of their email inboxes comprehensively. All of us get up in the morning these days and have quite a few emails from companies we wonder how we got on the list for. And we wonder, should I unsubscribe? Do I maybe want to see this? Maybe I'll read it later. Unroll Me gives you the opportunity to actually decide to unsubscribe from some of these emails or to digest them and determine when you'd like to see them. So this gives you real control over emails in your inbox and how you'd like to handle when and how you view them. Workflow.is really lets you create workflows using lots of apps and lots of processes. They describe themselves as sort of the holes in between apps that you usually use together. So sort of like Zapier, Workflow IS lets you design workflows with steps, though, of how you'd like to get things done. And you can do everything from create websites to put playlists together. It's definitely worth exploring if you're looking for ways to make your apps work better together using the process that you'd like to do every day. Now, if you use a lot of Microsoft product, Microsoft 
workflow is a workflow product from Microsoft. So it's designed to help you put workflows together using Microsoft applications. Many of us are very taxed brain-wise these days and are starting to forget passwords. There are some great password management tools out there and Dashlane is one of them. Not only does Dashlane help you manage your passwords and log into sites you frequently use and to see how secure your passwords are. One of the nicest features is if you would like to give someone access to something that they need to log in for you um, and work on, say you work on MailChimp and you'd like a vendor to actually be able to log into MailChimp, if you don't want to share your actual password with that company, you can send them a Dashlane and Dashlane will allow them to log into that application like they were you to do what they need to do and then to log out and not to really have your password exposed. So that's a very unique way to actually share the ability for people to work in applications together. Brain FM is all about using music to focus. Um, they actually have done a lot of studies on brain activity and behavior and figured out that within, they say, about 15 minutes, they can have you focus much better. They also have tunes and tracks to help you relax or even sleep better. So if you're looking to use music as a way to make you more productive or more relaxed, you can actually try Brain FM. If you need to track time on your projects um, so you can bill clients or bill your employer in terms of invoicing for hours, Toggle is a great solution to be able to do that. It actually will get installed and help you track via what applications you have open, how much time you're spending on any given project. You can then export those hours or that time and easily add it to invoices, making you a lot more efficient at billing. Now, here's another one that doesn't require any technology at all unless you count a kitchen timer. The Pomodoro technique is a way to actually spend a focused 30 minute period on getting things done. You actually chunk your tasks into 25 minute sprints, if you will, and then you have five minutes in between these sprints. So you decide what you're going to do for the next 25 minutes. You set a timer. You can use this handy tomato type kitchen timer which is what the technique was actually named for. A gentleman saw his wife's kitchen timer and decided that he would set it for 25 minutes to get things done in a focused way. Or there are lots of apps that actually leverage timers and let people use the Pomodoro technique to get things done. Any way you time it, it's a pretty useful way to actually parse your day and figure out how to utilize 25 minute blocks to really focus on completing a set of tasks. There's an app that actually leverages a lot of the Pomodoro technique, but actually will use your device and shut down other applications if you tell it what you'd like to focus on. The 3030 Binary Hammer app, probably named by Thor, just kidding, uh, actually will close down other applications if you say, for instance, that you would like to spend the next 30 minutes focused on answering emails. It will not leverage the other apps on your device and notify you giving you that space to actually use the Pomodoro technique and focus for 30 minutes on any given application-based set of tasks. Now, we've talked a lot about things that are very useful and somewhat serious, but sometimes productivity, like with music and Brain FM, requires some other kind of background noise. If you're a person who works very well in a coffee shop because you love the rhubarb, 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 the dropping of spoons, the clinking of glasses, you should try Coffeetivity. Coffeetivity actually allows you to work with the background sounds of a coffee shop without leaving home. So you can safely shelter in place and feel like you're sitting in a coffee shop with Coffeetivity. It was designed by some very fun college students as a way to feel like when they were studying late at night that they were still in the thick of things. And of course, we've talked a lot about using your digital devices, your computers, but sometimes we just need to take a step back and really stop and smell the forest. And that's exactly what Forest, the app, allows you to do. For every 30 minutes that you don't touch your device when you have Forest running, you grow a tree, thus building your forest. When you pick up that device while you have Forest running within the 30 minutes, you kill the tree. <laughs> It really is just designed to help you or a loved one track their device usage and learn to put it down for 30 minute periods and really take time 
to understand what life has to offer other than in the digital world. So with that, my friends, that is your quick look at how you can streamline your workflow, boost productivity, both with technology tools and with simple tools like pen and paper as well. Once again, you can see many of these applications I've discussed at meetingpool.net slash cool apps. I'm Tara Thomas. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day.